Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. So we've got the two upper sections of metal roof on and we're going to start working on the lower section above the garage. However, in order to do that, I think it's very important that we take the time and we get the siding up on this end wall. Our goal is we're going to run the first panel that has to be cut, bent up that side wall there, or end wall actually, and properly flashed so that we can run our siding. So once we get that siding done, we'll have that first piece on, then we can run the rest of the metal roof. We're actually waiting on the rest of our metal roof. It should be here tomorrow. So this is a perfect job for the day. So I'll take you guys through some of that as we get this prep for siding. All right, so this is the detail we're talking about right here where the end wall comes down and meets the roof of our garage. And what we want to do is make sure that we have all of this flashed and detailed properly so that we can install the siding up here on this wall. What that means is we've got our first piece of metal and I'll show you what we do to make sure that this is detailed properly and, you know, obviously leak free. We don't want water getting in here ever. What we've done is we've ripped it down uh, to the right width. We've done a one inch bend up here, and this is what's going to be our flashing with a counter flash. Now you might be saying that's not too big of a, of a flash there, but don't worry, it's, uh, it's not done yet. We're gonna detail this the way it's meant to be detailed. And this right here, a lot of people might do a little bend up on this pan, but you'll see why we're not too concerned about that here. Um, we could have done it, but it's just kind of a, I think it's a little bit of a waste of your time. And what we've also done is left the hem undone at the moment because what we're going to do is use this piece to figure out exactly where this piece goes. I'll get some measurements, cut this piece, install it, then we'll work our way to this one. Now the reason we're not going to install this whole roof is because right now this will give us all the flashing and counter flashing necessary to side without having any metal here on this section of the roof. Now obviously the goal there is that we don't want to scratch the roof. It's easier to walk up and down the weather logic instead of on a metal panel. So in general, get this one piece on, do all this work here, then we will continue with the metal roof. All right, so we got the other side on. Now we're gonna go ahead and set this, uh, this side in. We just went ahead and we did the exact same rip up this wall. Once again, leaving the first piece off. Greg, let's go ahead and slide this in. So the important part is just making sure I got a little tiny gap there, just a little bit. Looks good up the wall, huh, Greg? That's pretty decent. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mark right where this edge is. Nine inches edge. Now that we've used this piece to get those marks, we know what this dimension is gonna be. I'll make this panel up, install it, and then we can finish this one and install it. Then we'll be able to run all these trims up this wall. All right, so this is a piece of Z flashing because it looks like the letter Z. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna act as my closure here. And it is how my trim is gonna connect without having to worry about any um, fasteners being visible. So this one is cut for here. We'll just go ahead and leave that there. So this guy is going to sit something like this, and we're actually going to bend this around. It's more like a C channel, so you can kind of see what's going on here. And this is going to be the finished edge that will sit something like this. So we're gonna get these pieces fastened like so. And what we've just done is we've created the pieces, the cleats, these are the Z channels that will get cleated down and will hold. See how there's that hem right there? So that hem is gonna get locked on and I'm gonna bend this over the edge and that's gonna sit something like that. We're 
we're going to screw right through that butyl tape. So this right here is the worst spot on this detail. So what I'm going to do is shoot some additional silicone just to add a little bit of additional protection right there. And then these little triangles I cut out, gonna push those down. This is how I'm going to fasten this. Always trying to go right through that double beaded butyl tape. There, so that's nice and secure. So now what we'll do is go ahead and prep our flashing to go right over top of this. So here you can see the bend over. This is on my uh, connection flashing here. So this is going to now, you'll notice the hem. It's opened up enough and it's gonna lock right onto those cleat trims we did. And then this is, this is how this is gonna work. So once this gets fastened, this can't go anywhere. So no fasteners uh, visible on the roof, obviously underneath, back under here there's fasteners, but there's a double beaded beetle tape that nothing's gonna be able to work up into. And we've got that bend over on this side. Our trim will end up going in here and cleaning that all off nice. So we're gonna kind of eyeball this to be right where we want it. So we've gotta get rid of this hem. Anytime we do a bend, we wanna get rid of the hem. Get that out of there. Okay, so now we've got our piece. We've got these bends that are gonna go around this corner. Let's hook it. And there we go. So that is the trim. It just locks on there. So, I mean, it, it it can't come off or it, it's a little bit looser now, but once we install our siding up against this, it's not gonna be able to come out any, it can't lift up because it's locked onto that trim underneath. And as I bring you around to the side, so same thing here, this is locked on here. We've got this bent around, this detail right here will get covered up just as soon as uh, we kind of tidy up this detail. I'm gonna tape this top off and uh, this will be the next detail, this counter flash that goes over this guy and gets that all sealed up nice so any water coming down this wall won't be able to work its way back in here. And then that's where we'll fix this last little detail here that's a little bit tough. I'm always afraid I'm gonna slip. And slice your fingers? Slice it off. Yeah. Now it's kind of important that I get this in pretty close to where I want it. Mm -hmm. I think I'm in. So I'm not gonna go crazy, you start working it in. So now you can kind of see the way that this flashing works. We've got the, the panel bent up on the wall and then this has that open hem filled with the sealant that goes over that piece of uh, bend up, in, a, in essence, giving us a nice counter flash that nothing is gonna be able to work its way up. And then this will get tape sealed to the integrated WRB on the WeatherLogic panel, just like all these seams are taped and no moisture will be able to get back behind there. And uh, I think it's a really nice detail. We've got a nice tall flashing and this is always the worst spot right here. I'm not a huge fan of it, but I've thought about ways to make it better. I just don't know. Anytime you have outside corners, you have the possibility of uh, a spot where you can't wrap the flashings around each other. Steel's not going to be malleable for that. So you just always try to flash, think like water, make sure everything is overlapped the correct way, and then you do your best caulk the rest. And I know that sounds negative, but it really is the best way to do it. Mechanical flashing is always the best, um, you know, the best process but sometimes you gotta rely on some silicone for added, you know, added protection, really. All right, so for this top piece here, you can see 
on uh, all of our connections, what we do is we notch out, uh, you know, about four or five, six inches, whatever. And that's going to butt right into the last piece and overlap. So you can see the little bit of caulk sticking out here. Uh, this all gets, well, actually, maybe this is a little bit better view. You can see right here, we got this hem filled with the caulk sealant. And that's what gets pushed down and embedded into this joint here where this flashing comes up. And when we run an overlap, we'll add a little bit more caulk here up the side so it's good. But then what we do up here at the top, where's the top, Greg? Is you can see the 412 pitch. And the way this is going to work is when this gets set on here, what we did was we found the exact middle by setting the piece in where it goes and then just scoring a line and then doing it also from the left side finding our exact peak which look at that we're like right up the middle of this you see the joint in the weather logic greg and it's literally dead nuts so we plan it right ah it's maybe a 16th off i don't know we're not that good uh oh By the way, this is what we're using. So this is Trempro 659 thermoplastic elastomeric sealant. I don't know what that means. I do know that this is what my metal supplier sends us. So I'm gonna assume it's the right stuff. I, I should assume that, but do we have another tube up here? Definitely don't want this stuff touching you. So we're just gonna make sure we're lined up pretty good. I think I'm good, Greg. I'm just gonna kind of work it in. Okay, don't push down too tight. Cool, so now you can see Greg just wrapped this up. He's got that flashing is all taped off. Back to the integrated WRB panel. Greg, nice work on the tape bed. Um, sometimes your tape can get a little squirrely, but I gotta say, man, you did, you did good work here. I took my time. So this is kind of a moment of truth. I'm gonna get the first piece up. We're gonna start in the gable, and we're gonna work our way out. That way we ensure that this center has a nice batten line going right down it. Um, and obviously this is very important now. So we've done the best we can to frame the building and just make sure it's as square, true, plumb and level as possible. And that matters because we just pre-cut all of these panels at a 412 pitch. So if we're not building it at a 412 pitch, the bottom cut edge is gonna look like garbage. So it's very important. I am always a little bit nervous when you do this sort of thing, but hey, it is what it is. You do your best. And uh, that's really all you can ask for. So I'm just gonna set this in here, kind of get it lined up with the peak. And I've actually got a mark down here. I wanna make sure I've got the proper spacing. Let's go ahead and use my little Martinez square. That's about seven eighths of an inch. And then we're gonna plumb it up. Yeah, right about there. Let's double check. So we've got a seven eighths of a gap down here. We've got a primed cut edge, and now we're, we got something to work off of. And the reason that we're not gonna nail this all off is because we actually want to run our roof steel and, and flash our ridge cap up underneath these two pieces. But I kinda need these two pieces in order to run the rest of this. And I wanna get as much work done as possible without this metal roof in my way, scratching it, you know, causing issues. It's harder to walk on. You know, the, the list goes on and on. So we'll go ahead and run all these vertical siding panels out on both sides. I'll pull these two off. We can run our roof out, then put our ridge cap on, install these, and then we can trim it out. Make sure it looks good. This is easy though, you know? It is. I mean, we did all the hard work. You know, you may be saying, wait a second, Kyle. I thought you were gonna run shakes in all your gables. The reason we installed this is because when we go install all of our trims on this end wall and put our shakes on, if we didn't have this underneath, we would have some really weird areas that we would need to pad out to make sure that they were the same thickness. And even though we're using a little bit extra material, a lot of this would be wasted cutoffs anyway because of the angles. And it worked out that each Every two pieces was one full piece of uh, the siding, which I think in the end, that's how I figured it anyway, just for overages and waste. 
And so I thought, why not just put it there? It seemed to be the right idea. And uh, I think it's gonna make our job a lot easier on these gables when we have to plane everything in. So stay tuned. If you're still a little bit confused, what the heck I'm talking about. Need some help there, buddy? Yeah, a little bit. I don't think you're really. Let's go! <laughs> Bro, that was like a whole movie we just watched. <laughs> yeah. That had a plot. We even watched the, that. That wind was uh, the savior, the dude. Credits at the yeah. end. <laughs> that was an Avengers end scene. Exactly. Yeah, it had like a little special movie clip at the end. Dude, the wind saved us. It blew it back up on the roof, yeah, basically. That. That's the real hero. You know, it may seem like I'm using a lot of nails here. I'm going every six inches. And that is, I think I actually might only be eight inches. To be honest, I can't remember, so I'm doing six just to be safe. But because we don't have a stud on every joint, we've got horizontal girts, and we're going over top of our struck one sheathing, we do have to change the nail pattern just a little bit. One last look at the inside. Tomorrow, my spray foam guy should be here and he's gonna start by spraying everything that he can reach off the ground or a ladder. And uh, in a few more days, this concrete will be cured enough to bring his little scissor lift in. And then he'll start focusing on getting the roof deck all sprayed. It's definitely gonna change in here. Once that gets done, we'll go ahead and seal up all the doors and windows so that it can hold some sort of heat if we want to. Talked to the mechanical guy yesterday, and he all he needs is some propane, whether it be a temporary tank or a permanent tank, some electrical, and he can get the radiant heat in the floor all fired up. Definitely nice to see this. Of course, today we're gonna see 60 plus degrees here in November. Uh, we're pretty lucky the weather is working out good this week so we can get up on the roof, finish the roof off. But uh, yeah, it's definitely nice to see this going in. We've got a lot of work for us to do because we have to um, seal off our soffits around the perimeter. And that's gotta be done because we're going to have a fully sealed um, building envelopes, so we're not going to have a vented ridge. We're going to have all of it will be just conditioned space. That's uh, good to see, and uh, progress is being made. So Greg and I are going to work on this roof up here. We've got to make up a bunch of panels. Those all showed up on Friday, so we're good to get the rest of this roof installed, ridge cap on, and then uh, and then we'll get back to doing siding and whatever else needs to be done that we can do without having windows and doors. So when installing these panels, since they do have a protective film on them, and we do still have to work up here on this end wall to finish up our siding, uh, we're actually just gonna go ahead and install these, and we're not gonna go ahead and pull any of this off. You don't wanna leave this on in the middle of the summer for an extended period of time. It will bake onto the metal, and then you're gonna have all sorts of issues. So I recommend taking this plastic off as soon as you possibly can. We're gonna leave it on though so that we can work on these panels and do as minimal damage or as leave as many, leave as few footprints as possible. Awesome, that's our last full panel here. We've got two partial panels that we need to cut down to size, do our one inch roll up, and then we'll have all the roof steel on and we'll be ready to start working on our ridge cap. That's, that's my beautiful wife. What's up, sweetie? Hi, so? Yeah, what we've got going today, as you can see behind me, we've got 
the the standing seam roof basically done from a standpoint that all the panels are installed. Oh, can't get my belt on. We finished up the majority of all the standing seam panels on the roof now. This morning, what I'm going to work on is getting all of the trim pieces that make up the ridge cap done. So I'm gonna make them all up right here in a nice controlled environment. I'm gonna set up a little jig so that I can make them super fast and efficient as possible because each panel, I need to bend and make up a piece of trim that is gonna close off the ridge cap so that when we spray foam the entire envelope of the building, there is no vented ridge. So we don't want any water, moisture, air, nothing going, well, air is going to make its way into the ridge cap because we're not going to be able to get a perfect seal. Uh, there's going to be some joints somewhere, but the goal is we don't want any wind-driven rain or moisture making its way into that ridge cap. It's going to be a sealed off ridge cap. So what I've got to do is make up all of these pieces. I'll show you how that goes, and then uh, we'll get up on the roof, start installing all those so we can get the ridge cap installed. We've got today, tomorrow, and then we've got another big rain event coming, and we don't want you know, we just don't want it to be open still. So let's get into this. So the other thing we got going on, Greg is in the background. He is ripping down a bunch of leftover scrap material that was cut off the roof when we framed it, as well as the wall sheathing. And he is going to be working on closing off the soffits on the inside. So all of those areas where spray foam can make its way out into the exterior of the building, we don't want that. We want to seal everything off because our spray foam guy is coming tomorrow to uh, finish up or at least start working on all the, the rest of the spray foam. We wanna be ahead of him obviously and have as much work as possible done so we're not in his way and he can be as efficient as possible with his time. All right, so this is the trim that we're working with. It's called just a, it's just a Z-Flash and it's gonna get mounted to the roof deck and then the open hem on our ridge cap is gonna end up latching onto this in essence, requiring no fasteners for our ridge cap that will be exposed to the elements, meaning that we've got a perfect leak-free detail on our ridge cap as well. Since we spent all this time installing those um, you know, snap lock standing seam panels without any exposed fasteners, you don't wanna go ahead and then screw down your ridge cap, giving a place for moisture to enter the building. This is gonna be a sealed detail as well and zero exposed fasteners. There will be some rivets to hold things in place, but rivets aren't the issue because where they will be placed, uh, we won't have to worry about any moisture making its way onto the roof deck. I've already gotten myself a measurement and what I'm going to do is set myself up a little jig and this jig is gonna make it very easy to make all these cuts. So I need a one inch cut, I need a 15 and 3 8 measurement, so that's 16 and 3 8 and then another one inch cut. And then what we're gonna do is just take our piece, line it up on the edge, we'll make our mark, Simple as that. So when I cut my pieces apart, now I've got the appropriate piece. I'm just gonna set this down and I'm gonna keep going. So this is gonna be an extremely long, boring section of the video. So instead of showing you all of this, understand that I'm going to make a bunch of cuts to get a bunch of pieces like this and then I'll show you the next step. All right, so we've got all these pieces cut down and now what I've gotta do is I'm gonna come through and I'm gonna prep one side at a time just because this side is gonna use my red snips and I'll get all these done and then I'll come through and I'll cut and prepare the other side. What I'm doing is giving myself some folded edges. This is gonna go in between the rib and what I'm doing is giving myself a place for the uh, double beaded butyl tape that we're gonna be installing to adhere to and give us a nice seal. So you'll see that once we get up on the roof, very, very monotonous. So I've got all my cuts done and my bends on the one side. That was with my red snips. Now I'm going through and I'm doing the other side, which I'm using my green snips. And the nice thing is my, my forearms, my hands, they're getting tired. However, when I switch to my, my greens, I'm actually flipping them over and I'm using different muscles the way you're cutting. So when you cut like this, you use a lot of your forearm. When you turn it around, and you cut like this, it's a different muscle group. You can do just a little bit of a different cut to save your arm. Probably feel this one in the morning. Oh my Lord. I've got them all cut up. I didn't think that it would take me this long. It's, uh, it's noon, so I'm gonna go grab a bite to eat, come back, and then get up on that roof, snap some lines, figure out exactly where these are gonna go. I can start installing these, 
and then we can move on to the ridge cap itself. But these, these got to be installed first. Now that I've got all of these pieces of trim made, these are the Z closures and this is what's going to hold down our ridge cap. Greg and I just got done snapping a line and you can probably see here we got a mark and that mark indicates here, come on plastic get out of here that mark is going to indicate right where the face of these trims go because that is where my um that's where my ridge cap is going to go so now what i'll do is i'll go through and i'll get all of these mounted into some double beaded butyl tape that'll run the length of this roof and these will get secured into that, screwed down into our sheathing. This will take some time. I've got to do that on every single one of these panels. Devil's in the details. Now when I talk about double beaded butyl tape, this is what I'm referring to. So here we go. You can see it's got two beads on it and compression is what makes this seal good. We're just gonna start down here on this end and we'll work our way back. We're gonna basically follow that line that I just made. So right now we're just gonna go through, put these in, press them into the double bead got my ridge piece prepped you'll notice on the underside we've got this open hem that's what's going to lock around my cleat trim and then I also did a uh, four inch or three and a half inch sorry bend up on the end that is going to get flashed and sealed so now what I have to do is feed this down the roof so what I got to do here is bring the ridge back far enough so that I can get into one of these pieces of trim and once I get hooked around that hem I can continue to go all the way down. So now what I can do is come back down to this end and I'll just give it a final push without cutting myself. Okay, go ahead and bring her in. Nice and easy, man. Nice. Okay, bring it in. Okay, nice and easy. Don't slice my fingers. Yeah. Okay, we're right there. And should go. One, two, three. One more, right there. Well, it's finally time to get some spray foam in this building, guys, because we're getting super close to the cold weather. Uh, winter is not that far away. And Brandon here, he's been doing all of our spray foam projects, BPI insulation out of Morrison, I do believe. Brandon does good work. This is a closed cell foam. We're gonna be doing three inches on the walls, four, four and a half inches up here on the roof deck. Uh, and as you go much uh, thicker, you really get a loss uh, or diminishing return on your money. So uh, if you were to do 10 inches of foam, it's not gonna be, you know, three times better than doing three, three and a half inches of foam. That's not the way it works. So uh, once you get a really sealed building with the spray foam, you know, that is the main, you know, that's the main thing that you're looking for. And so we are gonna be doing a fully enclosed envelope with spray foam. We've got the soffits closed off, the ridge vent closed off, and the attic space, because it is vaulted, we will be running um, all of our duct work for heat and air, ah, supplemental heat, because we have the radiant floor, 
but all the air conditioning ducts will be running in that attic space. We went with a conditioned attic. That is why Brandon is doing all the spray foam here on the roof deck as well. Guys, we just finished the ridge cap up on the main building and I really didn't have time to be filming this. I set my GoPro up. I will take you guys back up there. Maybe I'll fly the drone around and show you, but they were calling rain around noon and we had all this work done that would have pre prevented water from running down the roof off of that ridge because we had all those Z closures fastened down. So for me, it was just go, go, go. We had to get this done before any more rain came in. I didn't want water getting underneath the metal roof. We still have ridge cap to do. We do the porches, we have hips, we have valleys. So there's still a lot of chance to show you guys those details. We've got the spray foam guy, Brandon, here. So that noise in the background just wouldn't have made good video, but I had to get it done. So um, that gives you guys an opportunity to drop some comments or questions about ridge cap down below that I can take a look at when this video airs, that way when we go ahead and get to the porch, I can you know, try to answer some of those questions and make sure I focus in on those details. We got a bunch of cleanup to do before this rain comes. And then I don't know what our next step is, but I do wanna go see how the spray foam is doing on the inside. Nice thing is this space is so big and open, you don't smell even the product. Look at that. Brand's got a long ways to go, but he's making headway. Um, I will get some of the details on this product that we're using, some of the specs. I do believe it's a Demolac, 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 uh, high lift. So you can spray uh, a good thickness all at once, depending on the temperature out and all that good stuff. And it's a closed cell foam. So, I mean, one of the best, I think, on the market. 